Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing with the AP Calculus 2009 uh, free response questions, and here we are on the very last question. So the derivative of function f is defined by f prime equals g this. The graph of, of the continuous function f prime is shown in the, so this is f prime. This is just a graph of this here. Has x intercepts at x equals 2 x equals negative 2 here and x equals this one which is this mess the graph of g on the range from negative 4 to 0 is a semicircle and f of 0 is 5 f of 0 which is not on this graph for negative 4 less than x let's find all values of x which the graph f has a points of inflection justify your answer Okay, where does a point of inflection occur? It's when the second derivative is equal to zero and it changes sign. Now, or, or, or undefined. Now, the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative here. So we're really looking at the slopes of this one. So when are the slopes of these zero or undefined? It would be at x equals negative two as a possibility. Technically, this part probably has a slope vertical or an undefined slope which is a vertical slope but it's at the boundary of our thing so we're not going to worry about it definitely does not have a derivative here because it's a point so it's undefined there so that's zero and that's it these are the two points now now what I need to see is I need to see a sign change so I got to do a sign test on the set because I need the concavity to change the second derivative to change okay so we know it's zero or or undefined in this case. But less than negative two, the slopes are here are negative. Right? The slopes here are negative. That means the derivative of this is negative, or the second derivative is less than zero. So this is negative here. Between negative two and zero, they're positive slopes. So it's positive here. Be and then after this point, they're all negative slopes, so it's negative here. Okay? So um, these are both points of inflection because they, they change concavity at those points. Okay. Find f of negative 4 and f of 4. f of negative 4, um, by fundamental theorem of calculus, it would like, here, let me, I know f of 0. I know f of 0 minus f of negative 4 is the integral from 0 uh, sorry, uh, negative 4 to 0 of f prime of x d of x, right? That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. The reason I pick f of 0 is because I know what f of 0 is. So I pick that here. So I can rearrange this f of negative 4 is simply f of 0 minus the integral negative 4 to 0 f prime of x dx. Okay? Now this is 5. This integral is the area between negative 4 and 0. So it's all this area. OK. That's not a, a very easy area to find. Um, if I think of, I know the area of this semicircle. So if I think of this as a rectangle minus the semicircle, I can find this area here. OK, so let's do that. The area of this rectangle, let's see, this is a, this is a 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4 by 4. So the a whole area of the rectangle is 8. But then I got to subtract the area of the circle. The circle is pi r squared, but it's 1 half pi r squared, right? Because it's only half of a circle. And the radius is 2. So this is 8 minus 1 half pi. The radius is 2. 2 squared is 4, 4, which is just 8 minus 2 pi. So this integral is 8 minus 2 pi. So I have to do 5 minus 8 minus 2 pi. And that's equal to negative 3 plus 2 pi. Okay, So that's f of negative 4. Similarly, to find f of 4, I kind of do the same thing. I say the integral from 0 to 4, f prime of x dx, is equal to the antiderivative. And I plug in 4 and I plug in 0. Right. So f of 4 is simply equal to f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 4 f prime of x dx. 
So now I gotta do f of zero, which is five, and I have to add the area from zero to four of this. Well, from zero to four, this is the function. So let's do let's do a side problem here. What's the integral from zero to four of five e to the minus x over three minus three dx? Um, that's equal to um, let's see negative fifteen e to the minus x over three minus three x evaluated from zero to four. That's negative fifteen, and then I do e to the negative four thirds minus e to the zero minus three four minus zero. That would equal I don't know. This is my face is probably covering up part of this, so I apologize. Um, uh, let me let me let me rewrite it over. Let me just do the side problem on a separate page. So I'm doing the integral from zero to four of e to the minus x over three. Let me just make sure I get the problem right. Uh, or there's a five in front minus three dx. So this I was saying this integral um, is negative fifteen e to the minus x over three minus three x evaluated from x equals zero to four negative fifteen e to the negative e to the negative four thirds minus e to the zero minus three times four minus zero don't always ignore the zero because sometimes when you plug in zero you don't get zero especially with exponents is true right so this is negative fifteen e to the minus four thirds minus one minus twelve so that's that area um, yeah heck if I know what that that area is so so then this becomes all of this I got to let me see. So it's negative fifteen. Um, e to the negative four over three, and then I can add fifteen because it's negative fifteen times negative one, and then minus twelve. So this becomes three. Three plus five. This is eight minus fifteen e to the minus four thirds. Okay, it's kind of tedious. For negative 4 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4, find the value of x at which f has an absolute maximum. Justify your answer. Well, I got to check for absolute max, I got to check the endpoints and any local maxes. Local maxes are where the derivative equals 0 or undefined. F prime, this is the graph of f prime. So where it's 0 is x equals negative 2. And. Um, x equals what they told you 3 ln of 5 thirds okay now I have to kind of have to do let's see I can do a sign test on the derivative see this is not a uh, min or max because it stays it's positive and then positive again like the derivative is so this is neither this is not an extrema this goes from positive to negative so that's increasing to decreasing so that's this is a relative max so we're going to check the endpoints, which is negative 4, 3 ln 5 thirds, and positive 4. And we're going to see which ones are bigger. Well, f of negative 4 we computed, which is negative 3 plus 2 pi. f of 4 we computed, which is 18 minus 15 e to the minus 4 thirds. Jeez, how can I do this on a calculator? I don't know which one is bigger. And then when I plug this one in, into my integral jeez 3 ln 5 thirds so I gotta do this integral again but I'm integrating from 0 to uh, 3 ln 5 thirds
So I'm basically taking all of this that I did before, this negative 15 e to the negative x over 3 minus 3x, and evaluate it from x equals 0 to 3 ln 5 thirds. This is an incredibly hard problem to do without a calculator, in my opinion. Negative 3. This is e to the ln 3 over fifths cubed minus 1 minus 9 ln 5 thirds. This is negative 15. Distribute the negative 15. e and ln cancel, so I get 3 fifths cube, then plus 15, then minus 9 ln 5 thirds. Whew. Okay. So I get that one. I compare it to here. I want to redo this problem with more space. Because um, I have to add 5. So if I add 5, it's really 20 minus 3 fifth, fifth minus 15 times 3 fifths cubed minus 9 ln of 5 thirds okay so 5 thirds it's like 1.67 so ln of this is going to be a negative number I think because e is like 2 so like this would be this would be positive um, this is really small and this is positive this is a positive number what about these numbers this is like close to zero it's like a little bit it's like point something so this is definitely bigger than that and then when I plug in 4 I get this e to the negative 4 thirds 2 to the negative 4 2 so it's 3 to the negative 4 thirds well it's bigger than 1 so this is negative right so this one has to be the biggest so it's this one here. Yeah. I don't know. There's not <laughs> All right, let's take a look at how we how we did. Um, points of inflection negative 2 and 0. Good. I got 2 pi minus 3. Is that what I got? Oops, sorry. Yeah, 2 pi minus 3. And then 8 minus feet even minus 4. They didn't do any checking on the points. They just found the local max, min, max. Interesting. Okay, well, we found the right thing. But technically, you got to check the endpoints. So I'm a little, um, yeah. This is only an answer for relative max, not absolute max. So I think this is a mistake in the wording of the question. You really have to compare this value um, to the endpoints. And it turns out they are bigger than the endpoints. But to do that without a calculator, I mean, not like impossible. I mean, we did it, but I don't know, a little, little tedious. Well, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.